here so promptly at uh, 2 o'clock, which uh, uh, is very useful so that we can have the maximum amount of time for uh, discussion. Uh, thanks, of course, to Concurrence and to the University of Louvain for having organized this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, the title of our topic this afternoon, as you've seen, is Consumer Choice, an Emerging Standard for Competition Law with a question mark. Big part is the question mark, and that's what we're going to focus on uh, this afternoon. Um, this is, in a sense, a new topic. Uh, of course, the idea for this topic came from the fact that uh, more and more in competition decisions, so the decisions by competition authorities or even by courts, there are mentions of consumer choice, which didn't used to be uh, uh, so much the case in the past, but is uh, becoming more frequent. Uh, but there hasn't been a, an extended, at least as far as I'm aware, an extended discussion of the relationship between consumer choice and, and the traditional antitrust laws and, and consumer welfare. Um, there's been a sectoral approach in some countries to this issue, uh, particularly uh, in the media, uh, and the relationship between pluralism and, and competition, which is often difficult, uh, and where they are, there's a specific regulator uh, together uh, with the competition authority overlooking the sector, has already uh, initiated some of the discussion, but in a quite a particular uh, setting. Um, and finally, the topic is quite provocative because the issue is uh, uh, should the consumer welfare be set aside for a richer uh, standard uh, for competition law? Now, in the course of the discussion uh, this afternoon, we're going to address several topics, and I will just uh, point to some of the uh, questions that will come up. Um, the first one, I think, um, uh, will be the question of whether choice maximization or choice and en enhancement uh, is pro or anti-competitive. And we'll see that the relationship between choice and consumer welfare is not so uh, simple. Uh, clearly eliminating some anti-competitive practices may increase the possibility of choices either for firms or for consumers. But on the other hand, we also know that uh, the fact that firms uh, offer more choices to consumers may sometimes be a uh, sometime be a way to prevent entry, to raise barriers to entry, and in fact to limit competition. So the relationship is has to be uh, become uh, clearer. The second complex question that uh, we will deal with is uh, what is the relationship between consumer choice and consumer welfare? And again, uh, it's not entirely obvious. I mean, clearly, when you read a number of decisions by courts uh, uh, or by competition authorities, there's an underlying assumption that more choices lead to more demand and is good for uh, consumer welfare. Um, but there are several questions that we may ask. Uh, one of them is, of course, uh, for those decisions, which have, and some of them have been very notorious, well, here, for example, about the Intel decision and, and also the Microsoft decision, uh, that uh, uh, sought to have remedies that would increase choices for consumers. How's that worked out? Uh, has that made any difference? I mean, is there any indication that uh, consumers were happy to have those choices or unhappy to have those choices? Now, I'm saying this because, in particular, I'm chairing the OECD Competition Committee, and next week we have uh, an extended discussion on the uh, relationship between behavioral economics and, and antitrust. Uh, and this issue will come up. But clearly, the teaching, and this is the second source that, that we may have in mind, the teachings of behavioral economics, which sometimes say, well, too much choice is maybe uh, not so good for consumers or may uh, make life difficult for them, uh, is also something that we have to factor into our analysis. Um, the third question is, if choice became a standard, what kind of choice? Maximum choice, adequate choice, optimal choice? What do we mean by this? Uh, where do we draw the line? Can there be any operational definition of what this choice standard would be, assuming that uh, we moved in that direction? But there's a second trend, uh, of a second line of thoughts that we will follow uh, today, um, uh, which is the fact that it may be that choice is not so much a new standard for antitrust, 
but the missing link between uh, competition law enforcement and consumer protection law enforcement. It may be what allows us to make those two policies more complementary. Uh, if you start from the idea that uh, uh, competition allows for the possibility of choices and then that you move on, on under which conditions will consumers actually use those possibilities, those opportunities of choices and make competition work, one may have a fit between consumer protection and competition law around the idea of choice. And we're fortunate uh, today that uh, we have uh, two uh, speakers uh, from the two largest agencies that are in charge both of competition and consumer protection uh, because they w have thought about those problems and uh, what they will have to say on this will be very important. So without further ado, I would uh, thank you for being here and I think that we should start all proceedings immediately and uh, Paul, uh, I'll give you the floor.